Hello everyone, I'm Brior, and welcome back to Good Game Empire. Today, by your request, we are finally going to finish up the series of defense videos that I started back this summer. We've already talked about Castellan equipment, attack setups, and all sorts of other things, but in today's video, I thought I would focus more on what to do in the event of a war, because defending against incoming attacks in a war is substantially different. When everyone in your alliance is being attacked at the same time, each player will focus on defending themselves. You need to have enough troops to defend yourself against multiple incoming attacks, and you should also be familiar with how to set up your defenses because you won't be able to ask in chat for other players' assistance. However, just because each player is working to defend themselves doesn't mean that communications should stop. Make sure that each member of your alliance is being notified in the event of an attack, so they can get online and defend themselves properly. Also communicate about where support is going. If there are members in your alliance who are online and available to send support, but just be aware that they may need to recall that support in the event of an attack on them. A few alliances that I've been in have actually made it the job of one player who goes under the bird during the war to make sure that each person is notified of incomings. I think that this is a bit extreme. You should have multiple people in your alliance working to notify others at all times. Just because redundancy helps make sure that people get notifications and once again get brought online. But let's talk about some of the dirty tactics of war. Specifically, I wanted to talk about outpost captures in this video. Back in, I believe it was June or July of 2018, my alliance went to war with the Kingdom of Neff, and they completely overpowered us, obviously. However, we held our own and we didn't lose very many members. That caused the Kingdom of Neff to get rather frustrated and to resort to such tactics like capturing outposts. Now, this is a strategy designed to really inspire fear in the hearts of players that they'll lose an outpost that they've put a lot of time and potentially money into. But here's the thing. It's very easy to defend your outposts when you can reliably get online and you know how to do it properly. The very first thing you can do is open your gates. If your gates are open, your troops will not defend against regular attacks and therefore cannot be killed by regular attacks unless they are starved out. However, if you have members of your alliance support you, their troops will be eating from their castles and so they won't be able to be starved. Anyways, if you open your gates, your troops will still defend against capture attacks, so this is a great way to make sure that your defenders cannot be killed unless you actually want them to fight. However, each time you open your gates during the course of one week, it gets more expensive, so this can add up quickly. Instead, you might consider actually building a stronghold. Now, I don't think a stronghold is particularly useful overall, but it can be very, very useful for this particular situation. So a stronghold, if you're not familiar with the building, is a structure that you can put in your castle. It's a 5x5, five five, and you can store a certain amount of troops in it that, once again, will not fight in the event of an attack. How many troops you can put in your stronghold varies based on what level it is, and this is a ruby building that we're talking about, but at the high levels, I believe you can put up to 500 troops in that stronghold. And once again, in the event of a capture attack, these troops will come out and they will defend your outpost. So by this point, as you can imagine, it's actually rather difficult to capture the outpost of an active player who can be brought online with a text any time that player falls under attack. Really, it's more based on whether or not that player, the victim, screws up than what the attacker can do. Now, if you are the kind of player who cannot reliably be brought online in the event of a 3 a.m. outpost capture attack, well, in that case, I believe that desperate times call for desperate measures. As you guys know, if you've watched my videos before, I do condemn password sharing because of the inherent risk and because of the fact that it is against the rules of the game, but personally, I would not judge somebody who resorted to such a strategy to avoid losing their outpost. Now, if the player who is trying to capture your outposts has relocated to be right next to them, and your main castle is nowhere to be found, then I might actually consider going under the bird. When you're under the bird, that is protection mode, 
other players cannot capture your outpost, but they can take things like your uh, public RV, so just be aware of that. Anyways, if somebody relocates right next to your outpost, and especially if they have a special Castellum that can move quickly, you may only have a warning of about 10 minutes. When most players think of capture attacks, they think of attacks that take hours and hours, uh, potentially even days in some cases, to reach their target, and while that's mostly true, once again, if a player has relocated and has a special Castellan, you may not have nearly that amount of warning, in which case you might not have enough time to quickly react, even if you can be brought online with a text. Uh, so once again, sometimes going under the bird may be your only option. Sometimes it might be that or leaving your alliance. And while leaving your alliance could be a good way to get yourself out of hot water, sometimes it's not always an option. If the players who are trying to capture your outposts are on a vendetta after you, they may not let you leave the war. And furthermore, leaving your alliance is a cowardly move, and it simply validates that this tactic, the tactic of capturing other players' outposts, is effective, and we don't want to do that. One last thing about outpost captures before I move on to the next topic. Some alliances will try to sneak in outpost captures amidst mass attacks. So if there are many horns coming in, that capture attack might be lost among them, and before you know it, your outpost has been captured. Once your outpost is captured, the enemy alliance can stack hundreds of thousands of defenders or even more at that location, and it can be very, very difficult to knock off that capture attack, in some cases practically impossible. Once they have 200k defenders at that location, even very strong attacks will only be killing I don't know, a few hundred, so that's not a situation that you want to be in. If your outpost does get captured, make sure that someone in your alliance sends a lightning fast attack, maybe even a, sni a snipe attack, to kill off those attackers before the enemy alliance can reach that location with their support. You should probably have a few players in your alliance specifically watch that outpost to spot any incoming sneaky capture attacks, and remember that the enemy alliance will have to uh, hold your outpost in capture mode for 24 hours or a shorter period of time if their equipment uh, reduces that time, uh, and then after that time expires, that outpost will become theirs. Now, another topic that I wanted to cover in today's video was Alliance property, like royal towers, capitals, and even metropolises. Let's start by talking about the simplest, which would be the royal towers. And fun fact, a few years ago I actually had a royal tower of my own, and for that reason I can tell you that they are huge burdens on any alliance. In order to reliably hold these and protect them from others who might be interested in capturing them, your whole alliance will need to be sending support on a regular basis, even outside of wartime. As you might already know, the advantage of owning a royal tower is it slightly increases the combat strength of your troops when you go to capture a capital or uh, metropolis from an enemy alliance. However, if your server is anything like the US-1 server, the most powerful alliances already own all of that property and most of the royal towers as well, which means that property isn't likely to be changing hands anytime soon, and in my own opinion, having a royal tower is a greater burden than not. But if your alliance does have a royal tower, make sure the owner is a player who can be brought online at any time of the day and who has a very powerful Castellan. You might not think about this, but in a royal tower, because it's not an actual castle, you cannot equip a wall space build item, which means it's even harder to hold even one flank of the wall against powerful six wave attacks. The one advantage that you can have with a royal tower is if you put a uh, castell in there that has a lot of courtyard and then you stack that courtyard with hundreds of thousands of troops, in that case, yes, it would be very difficult to do much damage at all to that royal tower, uh, but for most alliances, I recommend that you don't bother with these. However, let's say that your alliance has decided that it wants a royal tower and is preparing to declare war against an alliance that it wants to capture one from. Well, in that case, I would recommend that you capture that royal tower as quickly as possible. It should probably be the very first thing that you do 
during the war, and the reason for that is that many alliances get lazy, and their players do not support the royal towers with enough defenders. Once the war is declared and ongoing, sure, then they'll send defenders to the royal tower, and then it becomes almost impossible to capture. But in those first few opening minutes of the war, it can change hands. That's why if you are the defending alliance in this situation, you need to be sending your defenders to the royal tower even outside times of war. And if a capture attack does come in, similarly to the outpost situation that I talked about, you want to send a lightning fast attack to kill those attackers before the enemy alliance can get their defenders there and make the royal tower officially theirs. However, unlike outposts, royal towers don't need a capture period. They automatically become the property of the other player. However, because they're not real castles and you can't build anything in them, uh, it's kind of like they're permanently in a state of uh, just the, the capture window. Anyways, with royal towers, it's even more important for some players of your alliance to relocate their main castle to be right next to that royal tower. Uh, because as I was just talking about, Sending those fast attacks to retake the Royal Tower before the enemy alliance can support it is uh, vitally important, especially if you're not going to be diligent and continually station uh, 50,000 attackers at that location even outside times of war. Uh, so obviously you can move your main castle by going into the King's Market and selecting relocation and then finding an empty spot on the world map. If you are a alliance that already owns a royal tower, you might consider moving some of your players to that location, even if you already have one or two there, just to fill up those spots. Or if you want to break the rules, you can create uh, weak accounts, low level accounts, and move them to fill those locations, just again to make sure that en enemy alliances can't move in and take your royal tower. Don't break the rules though. When it comes to capitals and metropolises, the process of capturing those really requires the enemy alliance to greatly overpower you, which in some cases does happen, but as I mentioned earlier, at least on the US1 server, uh, we're in a state right now where there are two big alliance families and they own almost all of the property. So I wouldn't expect any of that property to change hands anytime soon. As for the process of capturing a capital or a metropolis, it is pretty similar to capturing an outpost with a few key differences. For example, if a player who owns a capital or a metropolis goes under the bird, goes into protection mode, I'm quite certain that that will not prevent that capital or metropolis from being captured. That is still fair game. I think that the stronghold method would work. Uh, and I don't know about whether or not you can raise your gates in those special locations. I'm actually rather curious about that. So if you are a player who's watching this who owns such a property, please do uh, do me a favor and let me know in the comment section down below. And oh, by the way, if you're curious as to what exactly the metropolises and the capitals do, the metropolises increase food production in the Great Kingdom, so they're helpful to have and the capitals enable players in the Alliance to recruit special troops. However, these troops can also be recruited thanks to some glory titles that at this point, most players in the game who are active and who are at level 70 should have. So in reality, palaces, those are the buildings within the capital that actually enable to, you to recruit those troops are not particularly useful. However, you should remember that a capital is just another castle that an enemy player can use to feed troops from, so they do make the individual players a lot stronger. And of course, it's nice to have uh, a big shiny capital to boast and to say that your alliance is the most powerful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am pretty sure that that's going to wrap it up for today's video and in fact for our entire defense video series for the year of 2018. I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all of these videos and that you also found them helpful and informative. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on this video. As usual, I've been Brior, and I'll see you next time.